Marjorie Taylor Greene, Representative Greene, she might be losing her touch with the GOP. This is very concerning. You know, we reported last week that Marge brought a resolution to censure Representative Rashida Tlaib over speaking at a protest inside of a congressional building in favor of a ceasefire between Israel and Gaza. And Marjorie thought that was an insurrection. That's right. And her resolution accused Tlaib of, quote, leading an insurrection for her participation in the anti war protest last month at the Capitol, organized by Jews, Jewish groups, which featured scores of arrests. However, how did that resolution go down? Not so good. And even after Marge put out this incredible immaculate trailer about how terrible Rashida Tlaib is, take a look. It's a kind of a calming feeling when I think of the Holocaust. I mean, I think it's really important to understand Israel is the racist state. I mean, this is an apartheid system, I mean, I mean. As they shouted ceasefire, as they shouted not in my name, as they shouted never again to me, in Russia and the Muslimin in the crowd today. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Representative Rashida Tlaib be censured. Yes, coming soon to a congressional floor near you, Marjorie Taylor Greene's vote to censure. And did it pass? No. Guys, it didn't pass, and that means a bunch of Republicans did not vote for this clearly and openly, let's just call it what is Islamophobic resolution against one of the cup, a few Muslim representatives. The effort required 23 Republicans and joined by all Democrats to vote in favor of a procedural motion that blocked the disciplinary resolution from reaching the floor. The final tally was 222 to 186. So, yeah. It didn't even reach the floor, y'all. Uh, oops. But and and like you, you're like, what happened? What? Why? Like everyone likes to to call, you know, uh, Representative Talib and Representative Omar uh, is uh, anti-Semitic. Well, Chip Roy, Republican Chip Roy, uh, sort of laid it out. He tweeted uh, statement on tabling censure of Representative Talib. Re- Representative Rashida Talib has repeatedly made outrageous. Remarks towards Israel and the Jewish people. Her conduct is be unbecoming of a member of Congress and certainly worthy of condemnation, if not censure. However, tonight's feckless resolution to censure Tlaib was d- deeply flawed and made illegally and factually unverified claims, including the claim of leading an insurrection. I voted to table the resolution. In January 2021, the legal team insert. In legal term insurrection was stretched and abused by many following the events at the Capitol. We should not continue to perpetrate claims of insurrection at the Capitol, and we should not abuse the term now. I love this justification. Be like, well, that wasn't an insurrection, so this can't be an insurrection. Nobody say the word insurrection anymore. But this is really interesting, Ravana, because. Yeah, she didn't even get to vote on this. Everyone was like, this is dumb. Cuz you know, if you say insurrection, then it will It's almost like they would have to admit that what happened on January 6th was an insurrection. So they're kind of calling Marge on like again, the double speak and like not to go down the insurrection rabbit hole. Mm-hmm. It's funny because uh, this is a deeply personal thing for Chip Roy. He hates Marjorie Taylor Greene. He is uh, and we, we've gotten to talk about him a lot recently in the past few months because he has been in the news, um, angry at Matt Gates, angry at Marjorie Taylor Greene. Now I want to say this is someone from the House Freedom Caucus, one of the most right wing members of Congress, election denier, supports uh, <laughs> supports January 6th insurrectionists, if you could tell by that tweet. But he hates Marjorie Taylor Greene because he's one of those Republicans who cares deeply about rhetoric, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so, so that's what his issue here was. I will say that you know, there's nothing that Rashida Tlaib said, even in that deceptively edited video that <laughs> yes. was anti-Semitic. There was nothing in incorrect she said. She said that Israel is a racist state. It is literally an apartheid state. There are streets that you can't go down if you're Palestinian, if you're Arab, if you're a brown person. I mean, um, you know, this it has anti-miscegenation laws. The idea that saying Israel is a racist state uh, is anti-Semitic isn't in itself anti-Semitic. I don't think that like Ben Gavir represents the Jewish people. That's a, you know, a member of <laughs> a member of the government in Israel who had for years in his house a massive poster 
um, of a mass shooter who shot up a mosque, not just commemorating the mass shooter, but commemorating the mass shooting itself. And when he finally took it down, he made a point to tell everybody uh, that it wasn't because he didn't still support that mass shooting, that racist mass shooting. And it wasn't still uh, because he didn't still support the mass shooter, but because uh, he had finally gotten enough pressure to do it. I mean, the idea that that the government of Israel represents all Jewish people or the interests of all Jewish people is anti-Semitic. And again, Marjorie Taylor Greene making accusations of anti-Semitism, Jewish space lasers lay herself is yes. so fundamentally disturbing. <laughs> it, 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 it's ridiculous. And so I'm glad that they didn't, you know, at least they're parsing it. You know, this was such red meat for them. They could have easily voted on this this BS, you know, resolution and they didn't, whether or not they, it was because of the insurrection language or because they're just, again, yeah, tired of Marjorie Green uh, and the Matt Gates is important. Uh, meanwhile, look, um, the war on uh, Gaza, uh, is having American political ramifications, uh, speech is being policed. Uh, people are being told that they're anti-Semitic if they criticize Israel and its actions now. And that's also happening on the floor, not just with Representative Rashida Tlaib, but with Republicans. And yet no one seems to really be calling them on things like this. Here is Representative Brian Mast on the floor uh, discussing funding for Israel. Take a listen. As a whole, I would encourage the other side to not so lightly throw around the idea of innocent Palestinian civilians, as is frequently said. Uh, I don't think we would so lightly throw around the term innocent Nazi civilians during World War II. Wow, okay, so that is Representative Mast um, discussing, and again, this is within the context of trying to limit speech around Palestine and Israel um, on the House floor saying, let's stop talking about innocent Palestinian civilians. There is no difference, just like there are no innocent Nazi civilians, which is just a wild comparison to make. Um, considering I think the word he's looking for is straight up Hamas, but in a lot of people's minds, Hamas and Palestinians are one in the same. They are absolutely not, and for those who Need a reminder, uh, Hamas is not the elected government in the West Bank, uh, where many millions of Palestinians live uh, under occupation with massive checkpoints, different roads they can't drive on, uh, with being shot at whenever they peacefully protest. Um, no, the Palestinian Authority is the governing body in the West Bank. But like, no one's trying to censure Brian Mast for those words. Um, which are arguably justifying the murder of civilians. AOC tweeted, um, think about how frequently Congress raises the prospect of publicly disciplining the only two Muslim women here today considered censure and compare that to the ease in which this representative unfurls bigotry on the House floor. We can stop pretending people are treated equally here. Um, Ray, your thoughts? Yeah, first I'll just say because you uh, you mentioned the West Bank that since since um, the seventh of October, hundreds of Palestinians living in the West Bank have been murdered um, by Israeli settlers, illegal Israeli settlers who have been armed by, uh, as I mentioned, Ben Gavir, literally drove to the West Bank with a minivan full of assault style rifles and passed them out so that these settlers could, uh, you know, with the explicit endorsement of the Israeli government, murder those Palestinians in the West Bank. And they can't even hide under the guise of we're trying to root out Hamas because, as you mentioned, Hamas is not in the West Bank. But I, you know, as to what Mast said, the United States should have taken a second to consider innocent civilians in, you know, he mentioned Nazi Germany. Let's talk about about yes. imperial Japan, how many, and, and it was justified in the same way. There's no innocent Japanese civilian. And because of that, we dropped two nuclear bombs and caused, you know, how, however much death and destruction and injuries and disabilities that lasted, uh, you know, brief and agonist lifetimes for these individuals. Yes. Can we still see the continued effects it had? We should have said, what about the innocent civilians in those times? And just like we should be considering it, it should be at the forefront of the minds of the American government now. 100%. I mean, like Hiroshima and Nagasaki were not chosen because of their military strategic right. importance. Um, to say nothing of like the bombing in Europe that continued that needed to end um, after the Nazis had surrendered. And yet many, many towns throughout Europe were bombed by Americans needlessly and civilians died 
needlessly. But anyway, <laughs> that's just history.